Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome back to some EVE Online. Welcome also to Dodixie, the uh, Galente trade hub in EVE Online. I'm doing today's video from here because there are a few topics that I want to discuss here. Um, and uh, they actually take yeah, like a little bit of, um, yeah, of a calm situation where I can analyze everything and uh, try to explain everything clearly. So the first uh, thing I wanted to talk about is this right here. Plexus, the 30-day uh, pilot license extension that has been going up for uh, more than a year now, pretty much uh, straight up without uh, any sign of, of slowing down. And uh, now before I get started, I'm not here to give you guys any advice or anything like that. I'm not going to say, well, start selling Plex uh, because it's going to crash or uh, start hoarding Plex because it's going to the moon. Uh, instead, I do want to have a quick discussion on this um, and just give you guys my opinion, my analysis on some of the forces that are and could influence uh, Plexus, uh, especially in the, in the upcoming uh, summer release. Uh, so, first of all, you know, you can clearly see here that Plexus have been going up quite a lot. They've been going from almost 520 here in um, Indo Dixie. I think it's closer to 550 where it started in Jita, but the chart is, is uh, pretty much a mirror of one another. Um, and it went up to like 740 million ISK, uh, where it's been bouncing off of uh, a few times already since the beginning of, well, I would even have to say since April or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, there has been some CCP intervention as well, but Plex prices are extremely high, even um, even uh, historically over, over the entire period of EVE Online. Uh, they might, might have touched uh, above these prices once before, uh, but uh, we've definitely, uh, I don't think we've ever seen them sustained at such high prices yet. Um, so obviously there must be some forces uh, in the market that, that are um, keeping the prices high or pushing the prices up and honestly if I read the forums especially the market forums there are regularly uh, threads about Plex prices there and sometimes in general discussion as well um, a few of the ones that I find most credible are uh, first of all people are just getting better at making ISK uh, so people are skilling up uh, more people get into battleships get into faction battleships so they can run missions more quickly um, they can rat more efficiently and those are really two of the major ISK faucets that exist in the game and so I do think that just the general increase in skills that people constantly have in the game are a factor in general inflation when it comes to uh, the ISK faucets. Um, another one, uh, although I've not seen it posted that often, it's, it's more of a personal opinion, but I do think that a very calm situation in 00, zero also known as the blue donut as the, at the moment, uh, is not helping matters. I'm pretty sure that there's actually a lot of systems where people can just rat all day in, uh, in, in peace and uh, that they're doing it, that they're taking full advantage of this and of course a large part of that uh, ISK or ISK that is being created this way is going to flood into the Plex market uh, because after all the Plexes are uh, one of the most popular uh, items to have in EVE Online. It is considered uh, I would say the best item to protect uh, your wallet, uh, your value uh, your account from inflation in EVE Online and there's a lot of people jump on this. Now if I have to look at uh, at one aspect that, that could have an influence uh, on the other side, you know, that, that could push um, Plexus down, it has to be the Cryos release. The Cryos release is going to seriously change uh, the industry landscape and a big part of that is what I think is not going to be a small ISK faucet that gets added because every single job that you make uh, in your in your manufacturing which will no longer have slots like this and one of these jobs any one of these jobs cost me like a thousand ISK instead every job will have a cost and a tax that depends on many factors but is generally as a baseline of a percentage of the value of the good you'll uh, you're ending uh, up with so of the good you're, you're producing so if you're for instance building a battleship that's going to cost you a lot more than building a frigate and at the moment I've built three orcas and uh, so every single one of these um, 
of these orcas which are worth like maybe 600 million or something like that cost me a thousand isk to do the final job so that is going to be i think um yeah one one thing that could uh have an impact on plexus uh, that that could actually mean lower prices another one is just the the summertime that's coming um in during the summer it's generally a time where the activity cools off a lot of people do take breaks and uh, this could mean less demand for plexus for at least a few months add to that this cryos um sink that that becomes active and it could be enough uh, but honestly i i very much doubt it uh, it's definitely a supply demand market uh, that is very active very healthy there's a lot of players uh, in the market there's uh, a lot of people that just hoard plex as well you know uh, they do see this as a protection for uh, inflation and as long as this idea remains a trend uh, it's going to be very hard to break this and um on that note you know this this just for me i think there is I, I would give a little bit more chance for plexus to be able to remain high even throughout the entire summer um and then yeah during uh the winter uh, phase of eve online it's all going to depend a little bit on on what kind of releases ccp is planning uh but i i i am Personally, I'm trending towards believing that Plexus will actually remain extremely high throughout, throughout the summer uh, and, and might reach new highs after the summer. So, so start going back up in a more serious manner after this lull that we've seen here, which is, which is actually May. This is pretty much when, when the summer starts. So that is my personal opinion. Don't take this as gospel. Um, I'm, just, I'm just guessing and, and weighing uh, the... Um, the pros and the cons here uh, but i do think that uh, that overall the the trend that people have to try and protect their accounts from inflation through plex uh, the the blue donuts uh, the fact that uh, yeah there's uh, the crisis release actually is not going to change anything to the isk fos uh, the isk uh, sinks that much um, so i do think that even if some industrialists plex their accounts uh, they're just going to maybe spend a few hours extra exploring or doing another activity uh, just to still manage to buy that plex and so i think that overall the impact will actually be uh, small i could be wrong on that if i am we should start seeing a pullback in the upcoming weeks because then honestly we should start seeing that impact uh, pretty soon after the cries release and then towards september we should be drastically lower than what we are now if if that is that side of the equation is actually uh, going to actually make a difference on there um, but I also have, have a final note on this. Uh, we know that right here uh, at, this, at this very big spike, or was it here? I'm, I'm not sure. At, at one of these two spikes, there was actually a CCP intervention into the Plex market. Now, we don't know exactly how all of this works, but the most likely is that CCP has, uh, through maybe some NPC corps, um, seeded the market with Plex that they have uh, grabbed from banned accounts. Uh, which overall would not really break the rules of the sandbox but allow them to have some control over the price of plex the problem that might be with this is is this intervention uh what's keeping the plex uh, price from correcting um this might be a little bit counterintuitive uh, but I'm personally I'm suspecting here at, at the second spike we've known not that long ago I'm suspecting a second CCP intervention right here um, that has not been uh, confirmed but uh, it's it's just a personal sus suspicion and what I'm a little bit afraid of is yeah that because of this intervention CCP is not allowing the psychology of the market to turn around if Plexus would spike up to 800 850 million. Uh, isk there are just people that are that are going to sell off their stocks um, starting to believe in that crash and if ccp keeps intervening in this uh, they're just maintaining the status quo people are just going to say oh well all right i'll i'll wait for the next big push up or i'll wait for the next release and thus they're sort of hampering the normal market forces uh where if this is a bubble which well it might not be but honestly if you look at a chart like that it's, it's actually quite extreme 
uh, an increase over for just one year i mean this is this is almost 50 percent more i think 220 million yeah something like 30 or 40 percent more in one year there's just no way that there is that kind of monetary inflation going on in eve online so if this is a bubble maybe the ccp interventions are actually um yeah countering the market forces and not allowing the psychology to shift enough and so yeah we might be in this languishing situation uh for a long uh for a for a while more until yeah ccp actually decides to let it run its course have it that really big spike up where people say well it's time to actually unload all my plex get my profits in and wait for that correction um, and this this could be a factor as well if this is a second intervention right here honestly i might not be surprised that this is also a part of the equation anyways that's my look on uh, on the plex market uh, i think it's a very interesting one um i've actually started investing some isk into plexes right now just not that much and i'm going to keep an eye out throughout the summer if the correction does happen i'm definitely jumping in uh, if not i'm just slowly going to start building up my own stocks because then i do think with a huge release something like new systems uh, being deployed in eve online that uh, we'll see so much more attention that that they're actually going to go for 800 million or even a billion um, at some point so i don't actually think uh, that if the crash doesn't materialize i think plex can already be a good investment even at these prices so yeah that's my look at the plex market now there are a few other topics that i wanted to cover and i'm going to go over them uh, a little bit more quickly uh, but uh, yeah we have two new uh, let me see if i can uh, find the browser here two new dev blocks as well and uh, i thought that they were decently interesting uh, the first one right here testing eve online with eve probe uh, this is like a special app or a special program that ccp is planning to release uh, during the summer basically you let that run on uh, on your computer the comp uh, this this app will uh, render certain scenes that have been created by ccp uh, through the eve online engine and uh, after that it's going to uh, provide data uh, on this anonymously to CCP which should really allow them to uh, find problems with the engine more quickly uh, so crash fixes should uh, it, it should just smoothen out uh, the development process of the graphical engine by quite a little bit um, one aspect of this that I really liked and that I saw in the video in the fanfest video that was linked in here um, is that it could possibly at some points probably not at release uh, work as a sort of a screensaver so you just have that installed and when you go inactive and your screensaver pops up instead of the screensaver it's actually this eve probe that's going to be running for a while um, doing its test and providing its uh, data um, to ccp so that's definitely something that i, I thought was an awesome idea and uh, yeah if, if probe comes out I'll, I'll definitely give it uh, give the runs for its money uh, but i also see some potential uh, in this now this is probably daydreaming but how cool would it be if we could actually create our own scenes and uh, and then have them run through this if probe i think that would be pretty damn awesome to create some uh, some trailer like videos and another uh, cool thing um, that was suggested is how about allowing us to record data from stuff that happens on grid for a certain period of time um, that and this data would of course have to be what uh, this eve probe needs to uh, re-render uh, the fight that uh, that happened while you were there um, something like that is is probably a technical nightmare but the idea is is really cool and um, honestly if uh, yeah if this if probe becomes successful maybe we might see some uh, some features like that I'm, I'm definitely game you know because i love making videos uh, and especially about eve online uh, if the graphical engine could um, yeah could be made more performant and if we could then have some uh, yeah our hands on some of these toys that that could actually be pretty damn awesome and uh, another dev blog that i wanted to cover next to the eve probe is uh, one that was just released principle of industry in eve online it basically explains a little bit the philosophy behind what they're trying to reach with the cryos release and subsequent releases that are going to continue to iterate on the industry changes uh, it talks a little bit about definitely making the process a little bit easier and more intuitive so that you know right away if you're uh, actually making useful jobs or not uh, and also yeah trying to incorporate a little bit more of a, a sandbox 
uh, experience into industry where stuff is no longer so static as they are at the moment but you actually have to look for market opportunities uh, geographically uh, with uh, bidding on teams uh, maybe yeah trying to find your small uh, backwater system where where you can specialize in in certain things and stuff like that um, yeah it's it's not so much that they're explaining anything in full detail but they're just giving their vision uh, behind the changes that they, they want to implement in EVO Line. I thought it was a great read. They're definitely asking for feedback on this, uh, if you like this kind of information. De definitely check it out and uh, let them know that you liked it. I thought it was uh, it was an awesome idea, just like a five, five minute read maybe. And uh, yeah, it just gives you a little bit of a boost and a little bit of an idea of what's behind uh, all of the changes that CCP is implementing. Um, so yeah, two pretty damn interesting dev blocks in my opinion, although they're not uh, that large in uh, on information. And uh, then finally, uh, I also have uh, an interesting, if I can, can find uh, the Eve mail over here, an interesting uh, Ishtar fit that was uh, mailed to me by uh, Steve the Jedi over here. Um, it's definitely in, in, uh, in the same direction as uh, my greedy Ishtar. Uh, but uh, it's it's something that newer characters might find very useful uh, because uh, yeah it's like sister probe launcher drone link augmenter uh, a large uh, shield uh, in induction uh, so this could give you the hit points needed uh, if if you're not that skilled uh, in uh, in the tanking or if you have some problems with certain sites uh, micro op drive obviously data analyzer omnidirectional tracking link. Uh, tracking links pretty much still the same. I have a cargo uh, scanner instead of this one. I find it really useful. Uh, and then right here, one scan range finding array 2 to help with your probe scanning. Uh, damage control for drone damage amplifiers. That's pretty much the same. Uh, sentry drone damage augmenter in the rigs, but then also a medium gravity capacitor upgrade in the rigs. Uh, the second rig all, does almost nothing for your DPS. And this again could help you save some time uh, for your uh, probe scanning. And yeah, the drones, well, obviously you want some guards and you want some ogres in there. And after that, some salvage drones and the rest, well, just fill it in any way you like. Uh, but yeah, it's it's mainly the scan range finding array 2 and medium gravity capacitor upgrade in the rig. Uh, it can help uh, newer players that don't have perfect uh, scanning skills to, to find more sites, especially some... Uh, Serpentify Outpost, 4 out of 10s and some data sites can be hard to scan. Uh, I have no problem, but I also have pretty much perfect um, scanning skills. So this this is a very interesting uh, little fit. It's just a little bit of variation on what I'm already running. Uh, but it can definitely help new players that have the ambition to fly the Ishtar, but uh, that may be coming off of something like the Stratios, find themselves lacking in some of the scanning skills. This can definitely uh, help, so yeah, uh, maybe it can indeed help some new players, and I thought it was definitely worth it uh, to, uh, to share this with you. And amazingly enough, I don't have the skills for Omnidirectional Tracking Link 2. I need to do something about that. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this information can help you. And I'll see you all next time.